All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I'm going to call this podcast is prenuptial agreement is the key to a healthy marriage or is actually one key component to a healthy marriage, I believe. So I may get a lot of flack for this, but I don't give a shit. But I'm here to tell you Regardless who you are in your life, if you're going to be getting married, you should get a prenuptial agreement. Now, a lot of people may be like, that's horrible. I'm not doing it because of money. I'm doing it because I love this person. Regardless who's the wealthy one and who isn't in the marriage, I could care less. And I'll first get into what, you know, and I have nothing against marriage. I actually had a wonderful marriage for a long time. And even my divorce is probably the best that I've ever heard when I, you know, me and my ex-wife got a divorce. I'm not scorned. I'm not any of that ship. I didn't, ha- or any of that shit. I didn't have a prenuptial agreement at that point in time. <clears throat> this was back in the, when did I get married? In the mid-1990s. And, uh, but now in this time and place, I think anyone getting married should have this. I think marriage has changed entirely and divorce is definitely on the rise. Uh, And that's not even the reason why I'm saying to do a prenup necessarily. The reason I'm telling you to get a prenup, and I don't care if you're a man, I, I think a lot of times we automatically think it's about the man, you know, doing this to a woman. The truth is there's just as many successful women, I think, now than there is men. Maybe even more. I'm not kidding uh, to a certain degree, just depending on the circles that you hang around in or the the family you come from. uh, I'm not going to say, you know, in North America, I don't know what the job ratio is if men are making more money than women. And maybe that could be the case. But I know a tremendous amount of successful women that make a lot more money than uh, Men, and also I know a lot of women that make a lot more money than their husbands and boyfriends. So this isn't, I'm not saying this for men or women. I'm just saying this to protect one another. And the first thing I want to say, a marriage contract, I believe, and I write about this stuff in my book, The Wingman. That's kind of like a must-have guide, I think. Uh, I think, no, it's to help men find the woman of their dreams. Is what a marriage license or not a license, a, an agreement, you know, when you get married, it's supposed to be for life. But the reality is it isn't because you can get out of it. If it was for life, you'd never be able to get out of it, right? Just like anything else. If you sign a mortgage, a 30-year, 15-year, or you sign for a car loan, right? It's, there's an end, right? I think having something say, this contract is forever, and cannot be broken is ridiculous because we know if it does not work out for any reason, you can get a divorce. So it's not for life. If you really think about it from that perspective, at least that's how I look at it. It's kind of a con, right? Nobody would go into any agreement, I think, to say this is for life, unless maybe it was so one-sided and say somebody said, I'll give you a million dollars every year for the rest of your life. You'd be like, absolutely. But would you sign any contract to say, I have to pay for something for the rest of my life, or I have to do this for the rest of my life, or whatever the case may be? It sounds kind of preposterous. But when it comes to getting married, all of a sudden, I love you at this point in time, you love me. Now we're going to sign this piece of paper that says we're stuck together or we'll be together for the rest of our existence. That's kind of unbelievably unrealistic, especially if you plan on having children. Because what a lot of people don't realize is every day of your life in a relationship is changing. Every person that comes in and out of your life is changing that as well, including your own children, right? It's hard to say that I'm going to feel the same way about you that I'm going to like five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. I know the romantic side of it. And you hear these people that have been married for 50, 60, 70 years. I've got family members like that. And again, I have nothing against marriage. I actually have this thing in my family because we have such a massive family. Where I go up on stage and at weddings, I start to talk. I, I announce anyone who's been married 10 years or more. So a lot of my family members have been married 10, 25, 50. I even have some on 65, some of my Italian family members. And I mean, there's a lot of them. They love marriage on one side of my family. Huge in the both sides of my family, actually, I should say. Very few divorces. They love it, which is great. 
But here's the thing back to prenuptial agreement, I think, is for one, if you're getting married, you have to realize you are not going to, again, be the same person when you're getting married compared to the future. That goes for emotionally and financially. And also, just because somebody has more money than you at that point in time, and say, say you're the broke one and you're marrying somebody wealthier than you, even then you should get a prenuptial agreement because you don't know where you're going to be in the future. That person maybe say you marry someone who's making 100 grand, you're making 50. And 10 years from now, you may be a millionaire, they're still making 100 grand or they may lose their job or maybe they whatever, they may quit their job. Now you're supporting them. Now you get a divorce, hypothetically. Now, how does that work out for you, right? I'm just saying. And this isn't to throw a dig on anybody. It's really about protecting not only yourself, but the other person as well. So a lot of people, I think, too, don't realize on their second marriage, or whatever the case would be, and I'll just use myself for an example. Say I have the girl I date, and I planned on getting married to her in the future or whatever, you know, she has children, I have children. And if we went into it, you know, you come into it, if you want to come into it together, uh, is wonderful. But if you having a prenuptial agreement to say, and that doesn't mean you can't share your wealth together or do all these things together either. I'm not, you know, that's what I think people think what a prenuptial agreement, you both can grow together. But it also, I, you know, that's great. But when you get a divorce, a lot of times, especially when one is wealthier than the other or brings a lot more wealth into it, I think it's completely unfair that you deserve their money or you take things from them and the other family members, especially say an inheritance. So say I'm dating somebody and they get a hu- and I don't get a prenup, we get married and then she gets a huge inheritance. It doesn't work out. I'm going to go after her inheritance or she owes me half of her inheritance because I'm married to her or whatever the case may be. I think that's ridiculous out of respect for somebody that is even wealthier. If I was to marry somebody extremely wealthy, I would say, listen, I'm going to offer you a prenuptial agreement because I'm getting in this marriage. I don't want your money at all. I'm marrying you because I love you. And if it doesn't work out, which it may not, I still don't want anything from you except what I came into this with, what, what I came into it with. I think that is the fairest way to go. Now, you may disagree with me, but if you are getting married, And I think the one thing you should do is talk about a prenuptial agreement. If that person says, there's no way I would get a prenuptial agreement, I would dip on them. I would be like, then why? Well, we're going to grow together and we'll never get a divorce and we love each other and what's ours is ours and whatever. Again, don't think even if both of you have nothing at that point in time that the future is not going to be different. One may end up wealthier than the other. But if, if you have wealth and this person refuses to marry you, and they don't have as much as you, is it that a sign? I mean, in my, in my eyes, that is a sign saying, maybe they are marrying you for the money. If they come and say, listen, of course you could prenuptial agreement. You're worth a lot more money than I am. That's fair. If we end up you know, getting a divorce, you should have everything you have, and also all the money you make to a certain degree. You can share it with me, if you know what I mean, if you'd like. But the truth is, that's your money. And you see this with celebrities. You see these guys that make five, $10 million that marry these girls and vice versa, women that marry men. And all of a sudden they're getting a divorce. Even Roseanne Barr, all of a sudden you have to give all this money that you've worked for over the years to this person that really didn't do anything for it but marry you. Now, even if you have kids, hypothetically, in my opinion, if you, like, if you get a prenuptial agreement, take care of your, even if you get a divorce, yeah, let the money go to the kids your money does not need to go to the other person. Again, if you're a, a guy, it doesn't have to go to supporting you know, a woman that never made the money and vice versa. If you're a career-orientated woman and you, you, know, you divorce this guy, you didn't get a prenup, you may have to pay alimony. You're, who knows, you, know, you split the kids or whatever. Whatever, that, whatever the hell goes on there, you, know, you figure out. But you gotta pay, you know, this guy gets all this money that you worked for over the years. It's preposterous. Marriage should have nothing to do with money. Now, I will say if you get married, say you have a prenuptial agreement, you go into business together, or you do things together and you make money together, you know what I mean? That's even cooler. That's fine. That is a separate thing. It's a lot different than somebody coming in as a millionaire and somebody not having anything. And then after a divorce, expecting that money to come their way 
Because I'm here to tell you, and I've seen this over and over again, a lot of people don't get a prenuptial agreement, right? They divorce, right? The one that had more money, you know, a lot of times, and I'll just, well, let's just use an example, a man and a woman, because that's where a lot of this that I know. So a lot of my friends, and I know a lot of them actually, they get a divorce. Now they have an ex-wife that sometimes they have to pay alimony to, sometimes not. Uh, they never prenumped, so you know he he in this case made more money than her. She stayed home with the kids, which is great, and she does. That's a lot of respect for, her, and she should you know whatever you got to figure out financially. That doesn't mean necessarily she should get everything, or half of everything he earned necessarily. Maybe that's what you want to work out. But what happens too with alimony and child support? Before you know, it, they're dating somebody else, or they move in with someone else, or they may even move. You had to leave your house. Before you know it, your money is supporting not only her and the kids, but someone else. And a lot of younger people, I don't think, think this way. They always think it's going to work itself out. Okay, But I'm going to tell you right now, especially if there's a divorce. When there's a divorce, so many different things change financially. right? Because now if you are together, that's just one thing. But now say you separate. right? It's, it's not even money a lot of times. It's like now if I'm a guy, I start dating somebody else. You know, the woman starts dating another man. You both probably end up living or getting remarried, right? So now you have these other two components in your life. And then if you start having another family or family, you know, kids with that component. But what I'm really trying to get to is life is way more complicated when you don't have your finances set in place. And with a prenuptial agreement, in my opinion, right off the get-go, you know where each other stands, Right, you are both, I believe, going into it for the right reason and saying, I don't want anything from you financially, I don't want anything from you. However, this goes in the future, you don't owe me anything, I don't owe you anything. I think is the truest way to go about that. Now, some people may disagree, especially if they say, Well, a woman has kids and then she stays at home. Well, if if that's the case, I get it if that's how you want to work it, right? But I see more and more a lot of guys, right? People getting married, the woman's career orientated, he's staying home with the kids too. Or a lot of times, as you know, you're married, you're both kind of taking care of the kids. Because most people now are in double income, I'd say. Most. Not all. Let's not get crazy and I get it. But like I said, more women are making a lot more money than ever. So I don't want this to be like one-sided, like I said earlier, regarding just strictly men trying to prenup women. But if you are a woman your parents gave you money, something may have happened to them, or you came into money, or you may come into more money. Don't be afraid to tell the dude, listen, I'm going to prenup you. If the dude says, no, I want to grow and I want to, I tell him to piss off. I'm just telling you personally, marriage is a long game. And as you know, I think the stats come out. They always say it's between 50 and 55% divorce ratio. That's bullshit. It's probably around 65, 70. They just don't want to let you know. It's too big of a business. And also, how many people are in a happy marriage, right? How many people actually are after 25, 30, 40, 50 years? Probably not as many as you think. And I'm not saying I'm advocating people getting divorces. That's ridiculous. That's not what I'm saying at all. But you have to be realistic when you're younger getting married or at any age. Because even if you're getting married at 30 or 40, if you plan on living 80 to 80, in the next 40 years, you are going to go through so many different things in your marriage, it's going to blow your mind. And if you've been married before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because so many things are coming at you uh, in your life. And that could be sickness, uh, people passing away. Uh, it could be you know kids. Your kids could be sick financial stress, you have parents involved, you have siblings involved, you, you, you can never control whoever you're with as much as you think you can, at least in North America. The rest of the world, I mean, maybe they can do those things. But you know as well, if you looked at your life five years before now, how probably different your life was or your, you know, a different outtake because whoever you're with one day may come home and say, hey, I'm this type, you know, I want to be religious. Then the next minute, I don't want to be religious or the next minute... I'm this political belief. Then the next minute, they're this way. The next minute, they want to go out and party. Then the next minute, they don't want to leave the house. Then the next minute, they're sick. The next minute, who knows? There's all these things constantly coming at you, and it's not easy to stick with one another because, you know, it's a famous saying, you can't control anything about 
that's not three feet from you. And it's, it's just a reality. So when you're getting married, realize it is an agreement too, because it's almost, it's not just about love. It becomes like a lot of decisions being made are life-changing decisions. Like if you go to sign a mortgage together for 30 years or 15 or whatever the case may be, you owe that money for that amount of years. You know, it's not like a car payment, hypothetically, a lot of people. Or if you go do certain things together, their life, you both move to another state together. Like you make these decisions, right? And what happened with me, I'll just tell you, in, in marriage, which again, I had nothing against it. But when after a while... I can see me and my ex-wife just really didn't have a lot in common because times changed. We changed. And I think no matter who you are, that's going to happen. That doesn't mean you're always going to change and go different directions necessarily. But I do believe a lot of times now more than ever, people are evolving and they're changing. So they, it's just a different thing now. I think also with social media and accessibility to other people, and uh, being able to find other people that you may have things in common with at that time and place is a lot different where you didn't have that before. But I'm not going to get all wrapped up in that. But in my opinion, like I was just saying, I think sometimes uh, a prenuptial agreement at the beginning of a relationship, I don't care if it's your first marriage, second, third. And I'm going to wrap this up by saying a lot of times too is, you know, if if you... If you prenup somebody you're with, and I've seen this happen with the elderly more than ever, they remarry somebody later in life, and then they don't get a prenuptial agreement. And then uh, whoever it is, the husband or the wife passes away, and there's no, you know, there, even if there is a will to a certain degree, like all of a sudden there's all these legalities where the person they marry thinks they deserve all the stuff that maybe whoever they married you know, whoever they marry, they deserve their stuff as well when the kids probably deserve it. You weren't married that long. Um, so that is something you really have to consider. If you have parents that are getting married and they're older, and especially if one has more than the other, just be very aware. And and I get the old timers a lot of times are like, no, we're doing this for love. But most likely, one of them is going to pass before the other. And when that happens, I realize there's a lot of problems if everything isn't set in stone right? Or even if, like I said, a lot of times there's a will because the one that passes is gone, but the other one is still even living in that house. Or sometimes whoever, you know, has the house, the other person moves into and say the person who had the house passes. Now that person demands to stay in that house. There's all this type of shit. And again, if you get a prenuptial agreement or some type of agreement, you know, with your parents to say, listen, you know, this is the situation just because you're getting married, you know, they don't deserve all our shit. (laughs) If that's the way you want to say it. And I'm not one that's into possessions or money or any of that type of shit. But you need to sometimes make sure you're protecting your parents, right? Because it's not only about you. If he has grandchildren or whatever the case may be. But just make sure you set shit straight before you get married is basically what I'm trying to say in a nutshell. Don't think shit lasts forever because usually it doesn't. I'm just telling you. For a lot of these old timers that you know that have been married 40, 50, 60 years or whatever even 35-ish, 30, they grew up in a different kind of time and place. I think younger people are much more hip. uh, And I don't even know where marriage is going to be in the future because it's just, uh, I think a lot, and I'm speaking for my kids too, they kind of know it's a little unrealistic. And not that it's it's not romantic and it's not something that they, they may still get married, but I still think they know it's really about how to protect themselves instead of just kind of falling in what I would call a spell and all of a sudden you're in love in this whirlwind and you just go out and get married and it's going to last forever. I think they're smarter than that and I think a lot of young people are smarter than that and regardless what age you are, you should be smarter than that and just make sure you make the right decisions for yourself, your future and if you have children, make it for them as well. Okay, don't make the mistake because it could really, you know, destroy a lot of lives, especially financially. So, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm even going to post this, but uh, it was just something that I thought about and I thought I would just talk about it. So, all right, if you get a chance, check out my YouTube channel, uh, Rich Chalenza. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to, I actually do a uh, mastering self confidence program where I try to help men 
find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. And I get into a lot of things regarding how to protect yourself when getting in a relationship, especially if it's, you know, you get engaged and you get married because there's a lot of things you may not think you're going to go through that you end up going through. And a lot of those things can end up financially destroying you for long periods of time. Uh, and it's just the truth. So uh, sometimes who you think you're marrying may not be that person. Also, a lot of people do things after they've been married a long period of time or even a short period that you wouldn't expect them to do to you, which could include you know, blowing all your money, which I really didn't even get into regarding that. Uh, but if you are back to not saying a prenuptial agreement, if you're getting married, make sure you keep track of your finances. My closest family members and friends, a lot of them have been burned where they have gotten married and the other person just basically drained them and they allowed it. Some knew it was coming, some did not. So, you know, just because, like I said, you find someone who you think is the person forever may not always be the right person, right? And uh, you definitely don't want to destroy your life, especially if you, you know, you worked very hard for your money or you received inheritance from your parents because they worked probably very hard and you just want to make sure you protect yourself. All right. That's just really the name of the game. That's all I'm trying to say. All right. Take care. And if you're traveling, safe travels.